TV4 or not TV4? That is the question. And the question was answered outside of Wales. In Wales alone, the fourth channel was a bit of an elephant in the room. At the same time the English Channel 4 was being created, the Welsh, ever the individualists in a rare situation, decided to push forward and create their own channel instead. The problem was that with the greatness of the limited spectrum of UHF, only one channel was bound to take the slot. Pedwar is coming. Long before S4C, Welsh language television was already a part of the Welsh television landscape. As early as the 1950s, with the Wendlow transmitter being built, the BBC had Telewele, a children's slot, and its name surpassed all expectations and boundaries when it became anglicised slang as Telewele, which later, telephone game style, became Sir John Betjeman's nickname for TWW in their eventual obituary in March 1968. There was also the news and a bunch of other programmes, some seen in parts of England, on certain transmitters only, such as a case of Hin of Vid, or reruns of Popular Cum starting 1974. Over on the other side, TWW, who had the technicality of broadcasting to two jurisdictions, had Welsh programming from the outset in 1958. This included editions of Land of Song, or Gulad Ugan, whereas the English versions were later followed by Welsh versions alternating every week. And there was also a program for women called Amser Te. In the north, starting 1962, there was WWN, aka Tele de Cymru, owned by Welsh-speaking businessmen and with a 10-hour-a-week minimum of Welsh programming. Transmitter and financing problems, including the shutdown of Granada's Welsh content unit, led in 1964 to the shutdown of WWN and subsequent takeover by TWW. And when TWW went off the air, the successor Harlech continued to offer Welsh language programming but with less strength and effort. Their answer to Hedio was Edith. The other side, aka the BBC, if that counts, started providing a more coherent television service to Wales in 1964 thanks to the proliferation of UHF transmitters. You know, TV can be awkward. It's the mountain sea. But extra transmitters are coming along. In 1974, the BBC started producing what is now their longest running television soap. Popular Cum, broadcast on BBC Cymru, Wales. And during this decade, things started to change. After the BBC were granted a second station, one that within a couple of years was already receivable in Wales, the ITA began needling successive governments for the same. Various plans for an ITV2 came and went, until by the mid-1970s, new television sets were being made with a button for a channel that didn't exist, just in case. The Welsh decided to seize upon this opportunity. Proportionally, the amount of programming in the Welsh language was highly limited, and rarely, if ever, made it to prime time slots. Worse still, Wales are subject to accept for viewers in Scotland syndrome, or a number of programmes seen in the rest of the UK were rescheduled, or in the worst case, didn't air at all in the Principality. During the decade, a number of Welsh language activists demanded that, if there was to be a fourth channel, it should be for them. By the end of the decade, all the arguing had finally resulted in progress, and during the 1979 election, both parties promised a fourth channel in their manifestos, including one for Wales. The Tories, of course, won handily. Their manifesto suggested that all Welsh-language television 
was to move to the new service as a commercial channel, like Channel 4 in the rest of the UK. Its funding will be partitioned between the Welsh Office, the BBC and HTV, the latter of whom will provide the advertising slots. Now that the election was won, however, their enthusiasm for a Welsh channel waned. New Home Secretary Willie Whitelaw initially announced a complete U-turn, stating that the new fourth channel would merely have the odd opt-out for Welsh programming. This went down like a knee in the sandwich, and Whitelaw eventually revised his stance thus. The new service would have Welsh programming during prime time and English programming from Channel 4 during the rest of the day. HTV and independent production companies were set up to produce the bulk of the Welsh output. As the year started to stretch forward, another broadcasting act, the 1981, already under the IBA, reshuffled the franchises, although not in Wales. Discussions for the fate of the Welsh language television dragged on, with Whitelaw increasingly sceptical of the whole idea. Some suggested that BBC's Welsh output were instead moved to BBC Two, leaving the fourth channel entirely at the mercy of HTV. HTV weren't impressed. Plaid Cymru started taking extremist views of the decisions made, or lack thereof, and decided to tackle the issue in traditional Welsh fashion, by attacking English-speaking houses and transmitters, refusing to pay the licence fee, and sitting around BBC and HTV studios getting in the damn way. Clyde's leader, Gwynver Evans, even threatened a hunger strike. And then the IBA had a stroke of genius, creating the Welsh Fourth Channel Authority, who will be responsible for the new service, to be known as Channel Pedwar Cymru, or S Pedwar Ek, S4C meaning Channel for Wales. In the weeks leading up to its launch in November 1982, cable companies were already pressuring about which fourth channel to air, the Seisnig one or the Kamrag one. The Kamrag channel eventually won out in the appropriate areas, and S4C was set to launch a day sooner than the English language Channel 4, the 1st of November 1982. <laughs> Preso Kunes Yaun Yaunichi Minonima and the Trokunta are a Louis Chanel Petwar Cumbri. At six o'clock, S4C took to the air for the first time, with an hour long special preview show presented by its first director, Owen Edwards, consisting of a taster of the programming that will air on S4C, either Welsh or imported from Channel 4. Included as part of the hour long taster were bits and pieces from Preview 4, which was also seen in the rest of the UK. A highlight of the first hour of S4C was the first episode of Super Ted, and if there was something S4C would come to be associated with in its early days, it was its children's programming. Animation quickly became S4C's primary export during the channel's initial years. From the likes of serial productions, who invented the iconic bear who flew through the air like a streak of red, and HTV West's bump of films, who gave the world Fireman Sam. Fireman Sam and Super Ted were initially seen on this channel in Welsh before having a widespread international success. Bump of films later produced the likes of Joshua Jones and later went bankrupt except that the intellectual properties of Fireman Sam are with some richer company. So how was their interest in animation that over the course of the decades of operating, S4C went further and further and dealt with co-productions with foreign entities and broadcasters? Examples of later non-preschool co-productions made by S4C included Shakespeare the Animated Tales, which was also shown on the BBC and on HBO in the United States of America. Then they also produced Testament, the Bible in animation, in cooperation with the Russians. Likewise, in 2000 and again in 2003, S4C likely headed the Children's Television Trust International to exploit two seasons of animated tales of the world. 
a co-production not only with S4C, but also with broadcasters and production companies from countries such as Israel, Namibia, Burkina Faso, South Africa, Singapore, and even separately Scotland. This ran in the early half of the 2000s, and was likely the last production made in association with Christmas films. Super Ted, among many others, was meant in part at the time as a tool to save the Welsh language from a decline in its number of speakers and to promote the language among children. Similar plans were set afoot in the Basque country, Catalonia and Galicia when the regional broadcasters were being set up in the middle of the 1980s. But that's another story. Many key programmes were BBC Cum reproductions, some of them long-standing that found a new primetime friendly home on S4C. Chief among them was Pobola Cum, the BBC's longest running soap, nine years older than EastEnders and second only to the Archers in total longevity. Upon moving to S4C, it became unique in another respect as the only BBC soap to be sponsored or indeed carry adverts, not just unique, kind of weird and disconcerting. I mean, take a look at this sponsorship tag for BT's Bob Troy in 2004 preceding Pobola Cum. Am ymoliadau BT yn y Gymraeg a bobl y cwm, defnyddiwch eich Cymraeg. BT, bob tro. And then there was the news. Before S4C, the two services had their own brands. The BBC had Hedio, and HTV had Ydyd. But for S4C, one had to go. While Channel 4 being almost national work with ITN, for the Welsh station, the BBC had priority, and Nowithion was created. HTV weren't left out though. They were responsible for the World in Action equivalent, current affairs program, A Bid at Bedwire. Still on it today. Sure, we'll never have an ITV no with you. We're a dedicated ITV comrade channel that will air for more than two hours a day. Perhaps unsurprisingly, during S4C's first decade, some BBC comrade programmes, especially the news, had to be preceded by a special item for them, making it feel like an ITV franchise in some mad way. Yeah, yeah, the BBC of Llandorf is completely different from the BBC of London. Within a couple of years, this map of Wales, which likely gave inspiration for HTV Wales' Wales at Six intro in like 1986, was replaced by a Celtic cross in the colours of the Welsh national flag. And then in 1988, with the Welsh dragon being formed out of none more late 80s pastel ribbons. If screamingly of its time, this dragon and the whole tradition was later dropped altogether around 1992. Well, it does bring me to the items and the branding. This was one of the first items, but another kind of item was more seen in those days. These items, seen with a croiso on day one, were picture postcard affairs, accompanied by one of the most creative, and to a few people like Matthew Harris, confusing brand identities for a television channel. Like a confused heart-shaped tattoo, Wales for Cymru. Someone clearly figured out that the letters S and C had the amusing coincidence of being the last letter of Wales and the first of Cymru, respectively. So the first few years would come with a ginormous S4C related pun, with S4C being where Wales and Cymru meet. One thing you will notice is that S4C's branding had an impact on the extent Welsh television channels. 
Newly bereft of the burden of carrying programming in Welsh, aside from doing Boreda in startup announcements and Nostar close downs, all traces of the word Cymru and the old habit of occasionally breaking off in mid sentence and talking backwards were removed from the items of the other three stations. Of course, items like these weren't a normal sight. S4C relied heavily on InVision continuity, just as HTV and much of the ITV network did in those days. Faces ranged from future weather presenter Sean Lloyd to future news presenter Nia Kadiog. But as the years advanced, both the cardboard look and the shonky old mechanical ish clock, as you're seeing here, or seen here in another version, grew increasingly tatty and outdated. Comparisons with the more widely seen and visually futuristic sister station at the other side of the Welsh border and the Bristol Channel didn't help. In early 1987, they still unknown, a new look and new logo were unveiled. S4C finally had a new, cohesive, up-to-date identity. The logo was given a coloured reskin, following the principles of RGB, with the colours being the other way around. The logo forms from an abstract landscape, appropriately a valley. The S is formed from a river, the four from mountains, and the C from a recoloured sun, set spinning like a coin during the form-up of the ident. The alternate visual icon even made it as far as the first Christmas items under the logo. Continuity announcers were still there. During this period, the announcers were sometimes accompanied by the valley landscape symbol in the studio. And even a clock was changed. Same for the titles for the Newidion, still Newidion Scythe, now built upon the notion of flashcards. Of course, in 1988, shortly after BBC Cymru changed its ident, and on its size near counterpart Wales Today changed its look, coinciding with the move to 830. It did have a new look influenced by its theoretically sister newscast, making the newscast feel like, well, Wales Today in Welsh. This also included the launch of a new extended afternoon bulletin and new summaries read from Bangor. S4C rebranded again in 1990. The replacement ident was a stately pan across some more traditional Welsh slate, with coloured liquid flowing towards the wordmark, creating a more watercolory and high-class approach for the channel's brand identity. Even its clock was given a massive update to match the classy look. With this update, Envision continuity was finally abolished by the network just for the sake of progress. You know, like Channel 4, like S4C, it's time to embrace the age of no faces. No face. Probably come by the massive revamp just a few years earlier, around the same time as Noidion got a new look. And also in 1989, at a MIPCOM, they rejected calls from Brazilian networks because they thought it's a knockout, Jus en Frontier, Germain Hebefliniao, was a lot more interesting, and they took part in four editions from 1991 to 1994. As legislation says so, the editions had to be presented entirely in Welsh, and the presenter was Eston Garlic. A few years later, these heats of It's a Knockout were shown to the rest of the UK with additional English commentary on the ill-fated Family Channel that was started after TVS got the boot. IFE later sold the channel and it's now Challenge, meaning that the It's a Knockout reruns 
add on a slot that will later pave way for the future Challenge TV, but that's another story. They also participated in 1994 with a fellow former British colony of Malta, who participated in two editions. Of course, the notorious 1990 Broadcasting Act had passed by now, and it had ramifications on S4C as on everyone else. The BBC was now limited to 12 hours a week of Welsh language programming, with the rest of the output provided by independent production companies. S4C was still more autonomous than Channel 4 was during its first decade on air, but did have a few ramifications on ancillary services. I suspect that with the deregulation of magazines, the Spec magazine, which was a pull-out supplement in the HTV Wales region of the TV Times, was decommissioned. Now that even the Radio Times were carrying the programmes for S4C in the Welsh edition, Oh, and the RTE Guide, if you already know. And the teletext service, Spectel, was initially managed by Oracle. However, when Oracle went out of business as part of the 1990 franchise round, Spectel moved to its own teletext space and was now entirely managed by S4C. Spectel shut down at the very beginning of the end of analog TV in Wales in 2009. The internet is to blame. By mid-1993, well past its 10th anniversary and after the English Channel 4 became an independent broadcaster, still not privatised as of now, S4C decided having a tricoloured wordmark might have been more trouble than what it was worth. Possibly they were having premonitions of what the BBC was going to suffer a few years down the line, with their spunky coloured logo ultimately costing them a fortune on letterheads and such. So S4C's next big rebrand recast the wordmark in monochrome and removed it from the centre of attention. This was done by the man behind the identity of Canal Cuatro. No, not that one. I guess you heard the joke already. Well, not directly. Although Nicaragua probably got a tape of old PDI work and emulated it poorly. I mean the real thing. Channel 4. Or as it sounded by 1993, well past the end of the old ITV. Yes, it was Martin Lambinen and his eponymous company who were given the task of rebranding S4C. In the decade since his groundbreaking identity for the Snake Channel 4, the whole notion of television channel branding across Europe has gone crazy go nuts. Lambie Nairn was largely to blame for that, of course. By 1993, he was in the midst of a heavily experimental phase, which a hard sell tried to label as fire and skill for some reason, with a lot of stunt actors and stunt special effects. European television channels, from TVI in Portugal to the Franco German Arte, to the ill-fated Christian channel ARC2 that had an audience of two people, to TV Noria, to the ill-fated Russian state subscription service Meteor Sport and Kino, regularly hired Lambinen to do mostly live-action affairs, with the odd extra CGI effect added by another company. S4C was one of them, and they and Lambinen decided to refine the channel's identity simply by coming up with another creative idea, Associating banal mundane objects with the defective national animal foils. Of course, Trogador is green, and the real Welsh dragon is actually Edraigoch, the red dragon. The idea was that basic bright red objects will have the abilities of a dragon particularly fire-breathing and being able to fly, so it's combined figurative symbolism and average day-to-day -day life with stark contrast. Sadly, there's no beefy arm or consummate fees. The channel will be the place where the ordinary and the extraordinary meet. An idea S4C was unable to refuse.
new look, new aesthetic, new S4C, new sense of purpose. There were Orions that were more representative of the Dragon per se in the initial set. The first one being what happens when a windmill drops fire. As the items dragged on, the concept became more and more abstract. These items included a four note jingle dun, 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 that S4C would use for years and years and has totally nothing to do with the Intel Inside jingle by Walter Vatsova. Possibly the only ident S4C had from the period to feature an actual actor, who at best was an extra. The Shepherd, or Dragon Man. Shepherd was what TBR called in its old configuration. They said it was never transmitted, but I'm proving otherwise. A pair of scissors with the fire being represented by straight striped ribbons. A fire breathing fire extinguisher! And a dragon kite! Oh, and during one of the two Christmases of the word mark, a CGI dragon trapped inside a snow globe. Oh, the excitement! S4C also reskinned the channel from top to toe, employing loads of red and ultra bold Helvetica across the channel's branding. First, the clock gained its best remembered configuration and one that S4C would use until they called it quits altogether. The news that mostly of the BBC moved to 6 o'clock, or Newidion Huech, and the intro was changed accordingly. See, that's what the news were meant to be, a human at a desk. See, that's what the news were meant to be, a human at a desk. Let's backtrack a bit, because there's something that always gets overlooked, more so than Teletext, is S4C's cool programming, or Shraglen Escolion. ITV schools moved to Channel 4 in 1987, but in fact, S4C already had schools programming from the outset, specifically all the off Welsh language schools programs that HTV Wales wouldn't air. In those days, they just used captions used by whatever devices S4C was running up until 1986. Upon the 1987 ITV schools move, S4C took a modified version of its branding, in a way the Seismic Channel 4 didn't, until the big split in 1993. Both fourth channels then had to inaugurate their own services from the 1993-94 school year. S4C slot was a hybrid of English content seen on Channel 4 elsewhere in the UK, with limited amounts of Welsh language content. In such cases, the English programming under the name ITV Schools will be straight up simulcast from the Seisnick Channel 4, whereas the Welsh programming under the name S. Pedwarek Escolion was played entirely from the channel. Post rebrand, its look consisted of a clockwork dragon, injunctions that will last up to three minutes, where the dragon wasn't assembled until the 12 balls were there. S4C was so fond of it, and rightly so, that it held its usage for six consecutive school years, until 1999. point S4C were still effectively using the logo they started with, the Peter Leonard and Associates wordmark, all stately serifs, after a year alongside the various dragon motifs. Two years, in fact. Looking increasingly out of place, it was inescapable. The logo was incompatible with the core elements of the look. S4C approached Glenn Tutsell's company for a replacement. According to Ian Casey at Tutsell's, the client wanted an identity which strongly reflected its Welsh heritage and culture. The logo includes a flame adapted from the dragon, Wales' national emblem, and the new colour is red, which easily functions in black and white. This is important as it is cheap to reproduce. The old logo was not.
The new logo was unveiled in June 1995, and surprise, it had become S4C's longest running logo, and as it turns out, look. The same five items from the Accent look were still in use, adapted to feature the new logo in the corner. But like the BBC2 items of the 90s, items came and went every so often. A couple of years later, BBC2 soft rebranded, the first item being a new addition. But some items were removed, others were joined later on. Same for S4C. And it felt like every core item that was added to the package had to include some arrangement of that ditty because it says for C's ditty. One of my favourites was the sousaphone one right down to the soundtrack. And I'm going to play it in its entirety because I'm quite, quite mad. <laughs> A fire pump standpipe. A fire extinguisher, ironically extinguishing the fire because we didn't start it. A magician's hat throwing fire. A version for St. David's Day. A pencil drawing fire, which also had one of the more classier soundtracks. This was used mostly before more serious programming like Erdwithnos and on the digital channel at some close downs. There was also a version only with the fire that was seen before don't we've live something as trivial like European qualifiers Wales with Wales involved. Uh, no, we'll see, the wind is fire! The water is lava. An iron dragon. And many more. Of course, as technology dragged on, so did the Yidens. I don't know how long Lambie Nan was involved, but as the days advanced, the items were feeling more like in-house affairs. Besides, by the turn of the millennium, Lambie Nan's own aesthetic was starting to change. He was now professing a new visual language, one was a far cry from the one that he cultivated in the early half of the 90s. From this sports screen. A flaming horn. And a computer's mouse. Coincidentally, when the closed down screens broke out one night in 2001, we got to see the wallpaper in the computers that generated the damn thing. Of course, even S4C had to dribble drabble in some of the special presentation that already was a rash at some of the mini majors, like BBC2 and the facto sister channel Channel 4, such as the Sunday drama slot. Special for the 2003 Rugby World Cup, depicting a kangaroo flag of Wales, about 15 years before Reddit's imaginary flags was a thing. And this one first ran in 2005, marking 60 years since the end of World War II. Backtrack again, this time to the late 90s, because I think I moved the timeline too far and accidentally fell into the 21st century. So basically, the arrival of digital terrestrial television, initially under the guise of On Digital, gave S4C a new opportunity to reaffirm itself in the Welsh audiovisual landscape. While on the other hand, Channel 4 wanted to become legally available in Wales. During the multiplex rush that led to the setup of the platform, S4C set up SDN, initially S4C Digital Networks, to cover multiplex A. This was going to carry three free channels one national, two regional, with the only national one being Channel 5. The other was S4C, of course, for Wales, with its new Espedorek Digidol service that we'll see in a minute, and the not-too-dissimilar Telegy in Scotland. 
Unfortunately, Teller G is a channel that lives exclusively on of Gaelic content produced for other companies that aired on BBC One and Two Scotland and STV and Grampian, only aired from 6 to 7 pm every evening, and literally no second of the channel in action survives because of the factors mentioned before. Anyway, back to S4C. S4C announced that over the start of digital television as a whole in the UK, they'd operate a Welsh service for digital television broadcasting entirely in Welsh. As The service started on the 1st of November 1998, the station's 16th birthday, and two weeks before the launch of On Digital. So for that first fortnight, they were only on Sky. Consequently, digital television also sought to default to the situation in the Republic of Ireland, replacing Welsh signals because of their proximity from the other side of the Irish Sea with signals from Northern Ireland, which they share a border. And this meant that S4C would be replaced by Channel 4 on many cable operators. I mean, S4C continued in Ireland on Sky for longer, but had to leave the country due to sports rights issues. At home in Wales, S4C's plan was to become a purely Welsh service, distinguishing it enough from Channel 4 to allow the English service to be carried as well in the Principality on Channel 8 in most providers, including Freeview. S4C also sees the opportunity to launch a new service before even Channel 5 did, starting in 1999. Unfortunately, S4C2, as Pedoric die in the old language, was from its outset perhaps the least interesting station in Britain. Less interesting than Tele-G, in fact. Created as it was largely to carry coverage of the Welsh Assembly, S4C didn't really have the material or scope for a second channel, just the gumption. Consequently, Sened made up a huge percentage of its output. Very rarely did S4C even have to muscle in on its second channel with extra content. A best was used occasionally to carry red button overflow of specials like Kana Gumru, a song for Wales. Children's programs on S4C, the main channel, were revamped in 1998. I sort of missed out on talking about it so far, but the station does have an obligation to carry such content. What's another Seisnick fourth channel? Name one famous children's program that ran on Channel 4. You're likely going to say the Hoobs, because at that time, at a turn of the millennium, that was the best they were able to export. S4C, as mentioned before, did a lot more. Club S4C was replaced in 1990. Preschoolers got slot Matherin, which in English is the utterly generic nursery slot, and slot 23, which means nothing in English or Wales. At least a 23 might be hinting to a possible address or something. So to replace these two, Planet Plant was born in 1998. Children's Planet, for school-aged kids. Well, while preschoolers got Planet Plant Bach, the little children's planet, sort of foreshadowing what the BBC will do in 2002 with the creation of the now more profitable CBeebies channel. School's programming around this time had the Dragon Clock replaced by the Great Beast being assembled over a shot of flails, only to burninate in Trogdorish fashion at the end of the sequence. Unlike last time, there was no time progression, meaning that for those watching at school, Three minutes felt like three hours. In 2000, the sequence was adjusted with the color slot simply becoming black and white, but not those of the dragon and the fire behind it. As it turned out, this was the last such sequence on British television, as school TV practically became obsolete, and Channel 4 in the rest of the UK stopped having it. Continue talking about Nowithion, but after 1999, they just stuck to an adaptation of the BBC look until 2013 after the Individualists. 
popular cum was still using the same intro from 1988 to 2003 and was replaced by something now more 2000s. By now we're already well into the new millennium. On Digital was renamed ITV Digital and immediately went bankrupt. Uh, the ITV companies were homogenized practically everywhere. Tony Blair was a Prime Minister, and Freeview, replacing the doomed ITV Digital, was starting to become more profitable. For S4C for much of the 2000s, their look was starting to feel tacky, if not outdated. In 2002, they were still the last television channel in the UK to use a clock before the news and it closed down. Just by changing the background to match whatever mood S4C was using for its promos. By the mid 40s S4C was still using much of the mid 90s items, then over a decade old. The only difference, apart from adding the odd new item to the rotation, was the addition of the channel's URL. Because URLs were becoming rather trendy for TV channel items in the UK at the turn of the millennium, it was clear evidence that your channel had a website. It's unthinkable to see the previous BBC looks from before the big rebrand carrying that URL, though. By the summer of 2005, S4C was evaluating a plan for the following year, and the plan consisted of a new look, and possibly even a new name. Wrong. The plans came hot off the heels of an idea by the new chief executive, Iona Jones. She set her stall from the start as heavily Goch-centric, which is to say she was against S4C producing any in-house contents in English. Her argument was that the end of analogue television in the Principality was going to be an opportunity for Welsh-language TV to increase and spread its wings faster. S4C was to double down on its Welshness, and while it kept its name, it got a new logo to match that ambition. The rebrand was finally being hinted in at the dying days of 2006. After 13 and a half years, the dragons, the trogdors, the icons of Welsh TV finally got their last appearance. Outside from later anniversary one-offs. But anyway, they were dropped right before Christmas. Over the Christmas of 2006, S4C had a campaign featuring television sets. Slowly but surely, the elements of the old look were disappearing. I mean, I already told you they had a clock, but already after the new year, it was increasingly little seen. I would say that the last time it appeared was in the midnight continuity leading to 2007. Then on the 3rd of January 2007, a two-week period featuring those sets had finally appeared. The website rebranded on the 17th. On the 18th, the channel finally rebranded. New font, new look, new logo, new S4C, new sense of purpose, again. This was designed by Proud Creative from London, and the new look opted for more contemporary Welsh imagery, downplaying the 90s efforts created by Lambie Nairn. Central to the new look was the idea of magnetism, reflecting how the Welsh have uncontrollable attention for their principality, language and culture. The one thing that did confuse the TV press scene was the logo. That 90s wordmark oozing whales of its flame-throwing sea was replaced by a much more simple and rounded, but also bicoloured wordmark. It's almost as if someone downloaded a font, started a text field and paint with the font, and coloured it accordingly. And the bar, my precious viewers, the bar. S4 slash C. There is no official interpretation or explanation that I know of for that affectation, unlike the flames in the 1995 rebrand that just been dished. Some of the time theorised, and they were probably right, that the bar splitting the S4 from the C sort of plays up the meaning of the C, i.e. Cymru. The letter being set in bold also suggested that the motive was to emphasise Wales, or rather Cymru. Welsh. Wales. S4. C. Channel 4. Wales. 
The upside was the way it was animated in the look in general, almost as if you squeeze a beetle on the resulting liquid forms the channel's logo, but less gross. Incidentally, the whole rebranding operation cost them £600,000 in license fee money. Inflation. The music was composed by Simon Pike, who composed the scores for the eye dance, and this weird little animation was used not only during school's programs, but also during before preschool programming, including the likes of Bobby Noggs, or Bobby Noggy. Another Welsh show that later became a national success. Kinda. It ran on CBeebies and was quite popular. In Wales, it was an institution as far as I know. The reason why I think they put this in 2007 before preschool programming was likely because the channel had opposition to putting advertisements in preschool contents, unlike Cartoonito, Tiny Pop, Nick Jr., and the now defunct British Disney Jr. In 2008, the existing set of Fidens was supplemented by a second set created by Mini Vegas. The designs were unique to the channel because they reacted to the voice of the announcer. On S4C Now, your daily dose of celebrity interviews, behind the scenes exclusives, music videos and live performances. Freshly squeezed, of course. Not the first time this had happened though. Good BBC evening, Four's man. initial Welcome package, which lasted Thank three and a half years, had done the same with abstract visuals. It was undoubtedly impressive, however, to see the same effect apply to actual live action footage. It's 25 past 9 on Sunday morning. I hope you all had a good night. It's time now for the Hollyoaks Omnibus. Enjoy. The next few years were also marked by the slow realisation of the pointlessness of S4C2, now pointedly rebranded as S. Pedwarek Dai. The new logo was bilingual, but the word 2 was rarely, if ever, used anywhere else. First, they dropped all of the assembly programming to cut costs. Then, having basically no programs left, they were at a standstill regarding the channel's survival. There were two plans, both of which were rejected. First, S4C would have added children's content during its own downtime. Second, ditch the assembly programming altogether and make it the children's channel. This sort of came hot off the heels of the launch of S4C's new children's brands. By 2008, Planet Plant was starting to suffer, if not feeling outdated, having used the same logo and font for an entire decade. Ku replaced Planet Plantbach as the CBeebies equivalent, complete with adorable mascots. Just recently, in 2018, these cute little guys were given international spotlight and they were picked up by an international company to handle worldwide sales, with Ku himself being renamed Chickpea. I would say that if Ku launched in a Seisneg environment, its name would have been Chickpea from the outset. Espedorek Dao was ultimately sacrificed altogether. Much of the assembly output found a new home on BBC Parliament. It also had the same job done for its equivalents in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Planet Plant itself was no more from 2010, where a point was replaced by an all new strand called Sunch, or MASH. on any traditional 5-6 to six tea time slot on weekdays, and on Saturday mornings after Co got bored. This arrangement of mostly imported Nickelodeon shows, such as Spongebob and shows that came out of the cooperation with DreamWorks Animation that is no more, still no Welsh loud house dub, and in-house content like its news round equivalent fail still stands today. And speaking of changes, S4C tried embracing the HD world with an independent channel, similar to what the BBC and ITV had at the very beginning in 2006 when there was still relatively little HD content. The channel was called Clear Lun. The channel was called Clear Lun. It started in June 2010 and ended in December of 2012, when S4C remembered they couldn't afford it. It won't be until 2016 that S4C added a direct HD feed of its service. And in 2011, another pointless controversy emerged over the start of overnight infomercials, except on nights reserved for assembly broadcasts. 
Granted, it was a healthy piece of real estate, but the biggest concern was that they were inevitably all in English. But cheer up, even the commercial one is foreseen in this day and age are all in size neg. As for local companies and services, are practically nowhere to be seen. They actually gave up prioritizing Welsh language advertising shortly after they started. S4C then made itself comfy and continued using the 2007 look until 2014. During this period, as Iona Jones had threatened, S4C became an all Welsh television channel, excluding commercials and infomercials. On the 31st of March 2010, Wales switched off its analogue signals for good, and S4C Digidol became just plain old S4C. Now, the Tower of Babel was fixed. Welsh programming on S4C and English programming on Channel 4. So what did they do in 2014? Devised by Sugar Creative in Cardiff and unveiled on the 10th of April that year, the current look of the channel is intended to represent Welshness. Yes, again, the same rationale for the third look in a row. Leading this change was a new wordmark, a simple sans serif rendering of the name, now devoid of any splitting symbols like a slash, and usually housed inside a trapezoid. Jason Veal said, We needed advice that becomes synonymous with S4C, so that when the name was taken away, it still recognised the shape. As S4C. Personally, without the name, Asa recognized it as a trapezoid. It must have worked though, because even as of the time of writing, S4C is still using the same look and the same logo. The only thing that's changed, really, outside of the Christmas items, is that in January 2015, they changed the items, first by dropping the close ups from the 2014 set, and then by adding new ones to the rotation. There seems to be a lack of creativity at S4C as a plate. ITV is stuck with the same ITV Creates bumper because of, well, factors, but they're going to rebrand the main channel back to ITV1 because there's much confusion. And Channel 4 is busy toying in with new ideas every so often. Channel 5 made its numeral an icon trying to do what they tried to do for years now, and the BBC, starting with the 2018 rebrand of BBC Two, is breaking it in. Even the relaunched BBC Three and the lens for BBC One are outsmarting the other main channels of the UK. By contrast, S4C is, as of now, sticking to a situation similar to that of the 1995 look, but ten times worse, because at least those look good. One thing about the 1993 look, and its astonishing 13 years of usage has told us is that if you want to keep the channel looking vaguely fresh, you must renew the island package by dropping items and adding new ones to the rotation. S4C is now 40 years old. I would say that the channel is experiencing an internal branding crisis, just like men when they reach that ungodly age. If S4C dares to start again and start afresh, it needs a new, more cohesive identity to reflect its reach and connection to Wales. The days of serif letters are gone, same as the days of real objects impersonating dragons. It's really hard to concoct a new, more coherent identity for the Principalities channel. Even a second channel will be a stretch on the budget. Not to mention the usage of a font similar to Myriad gives S4C a tint of current era Microsoft. Alas, maybe the next look for S4C will be either a return to Square One 40 years ago, or something more existential. If Channel 4, unless privatization by Tatarsov, is still under 25 in its soul, granted they already have uh, captured the web audiences, S4C must have to rethink its strategies. Only time will tell.
Yeah. 